Hi, I'm Juan. I hope you're well. Today's class will be great. We'll dive deeper into character design and use the references we have on pure ref to complete our character. As you can see, I made three other characters rough from scratch. Girl number one, girl number two, and finally girl number three. I tried to keep the same brush strokes on the same line work for each, even if the type of brush is not always the same. My goal is to make a fluid line, because my main goal is to make a fluid line. One thing you can do is really easy is to draw more lines on the limbs to force your eye to work on 3D. Also, these lines helps a lot when you draw limbs in perspective. Also, these lines are really useful when you draw limbs in perspective. Now then, what we are going to do is go to the rough group we made last chapter and turn the opacity down by like 50%, 50 around 50 or 20 is okay. So we have a first group named Character Design Rough. We will create a new group named Character Design Tie Down with only one D. I misspelled my bad. I will show you what we will do next. Look at the three ladies. Oh, surprise, I made a rough plus. I made a rough plus. During the tie down step, we will push the rough even further and put clothes on our characters while defining the whole body. So now we will create a new group and name it City for character design slash tie down with only one D. Don't repeat my mistake, please. I give it a number after the name because it's my fourth character design but you can name it 01, it's okay. Be organized with your mess. Now we're going to make a new layer. Name it whatever you like. I often rename them later on, often before. As I told you earlier, we're going to make what is named a rough clean, which is a rough plus to define the character even further and dress her up eventually. Choose a color. I work with black most of the time, but you can pick any color. It's totally fine. Okay, let's do this. Now we bring our pure ref board and look at the references. For example, I made a character with a jacket from the pure ref cloth group, but it may be too complicated to animate for beginners. Oh well, yeah, I love these shorts, which I drew using another reference from the board. I think we will also add some fights. Well, we know she will have shorts, Thighs? We don't know yet for the shirt, but we'll figure it out along the way. Maybe one of the long sleeve black shirts from the pure ref board will do the thing. Her hair will definitely be black and straight. Remember, you can do many, many, many drawings to find the character you like the most. You can even duplicate your proportion drawing, even. Full disclosure, I don't like the first rough I made. This happens to me a lot. I draw something then I start again because I don't like a drawing. I could correct it off screen and show you the result later on, but I thought it would be more interesting to go over the rough together. The brush we use is the same as before. It can be any. In the manga pack from Kyle's brush set, I use the fourth one, most of the time for sketch. I love it, I totally love it. Remember to use a brush who helps you improve your brush strokes and does not contain a lot of texture. Now, let's go. First thing, the feet. We will begin with the feet as we did before. Since she is more of an introvert, her feet will be pointing towards the center and be closer to her body. Introverts tend to take less space, but this is a generality, but it's okay. I will give you a big piece of advice. Go and read body language books. They give a lots of hints and tips about posing. Since we changed the direction of the feet, we have to change the direction of the kneecap also. People always forget the body is made of curves. Curves are a big part of animation. Remember the leg. Watch how the curves make it more natural and less stiff. Look how I separate the thigh from the chicken drumstick from the knee. This line will always help you while drawing on perspective. The more her feet are close together, the more she looks shy and insecure. 
the legs are no more in correlation with our gloomy and introvert character who likes hiking to be far, far away from people. Remember to use curves. Never forget about the curves. Remembering stuff and advices, one of the most important is draw without taking your pen from the screen as long as you can. This way you will improve your brush strokes. Think of the line as a piece of art. Go and check Lesman from Bastien Vives and you can see how line work can give so much life to the characters. Remember to spend more time on the feet since they are extremely important. Sometimes it's better to begin building your character with the feet or the hands. Too many people start with their head. Try new things. I prefer to go from below and finish with the head which is the most important part, of course. Now, let's divide the pelvis from the thoracic cage. Two simple lines will do the work. A having already a rough beneath our second rough helps a lot. Sometimes redrawing the same pose will only make it better. We will keep this arm a little bit open to show her palm and have a different view of her limb. I forgot to say the feet are on pronation. Feet can be on pronation or supination too, but the torsion is not as big as for the hand. Overweight in people moves the knees forward and force the feet to point at each other. Can you see now? Just with feet you can characterize a character a lot. This sentence was awful to spell. Okay, now, I don't like this arm. It's too rigid and too open for an introvert character. Avoid rigidness, please. Do not be attached to the previous design. Sometimes change can be good. Sometimes it's bad, but it's okay. It's usually food. Introvert people will have a body language which brings the arms closer to the body. The other arm will still be away just to show another view of the arm. Now, let's draw the right hand. Keep doing shapes and even keeping fingers in group. The middle and ring finger usually go together in one group. Sometimes means our little finger joins the gang. Hey, do you remember the brachioradialis muscle? Of course, it takes a lot of mass in the forearm on part of the upper arm. Now, at the perspective lines. We will do this hand in pronation to be on a position of the other one who is in supination, of course. Okay, so uh, I don't like the head either. She must be decapitated. Or we can start over. In the previous drawing, she was looking up. We can tell that just by watching at the position of the horizontal median line. She will look narrowly at the ground. A gloomy character will look more below her rather than upwards. In a way, in a symbolic way, it means she's looking inside. So uh, now we draw the vertical median line on the ears, two little semicircles. Okay, now there is just one problem. The head is placed too high in proportion from the body. Every artist has its own series of mistakes and he repeats them every now and then. Mine are pretty clear, is making giraffe necks. Thankfully, it can be corrected easily by using the lasso on the deplacement tool. We can use the keyboard pad to lower the selection pixel by pixel and be precise, really precise. To finish with it, let's make the head a little bit bigger. Press com Ctrl T or Command T and drag the corner. We can place the head in the middle of the neck and we are done. Don't forget the cylinder lines along the limbs. They help you when you put your character's arm and legs in perspective. It can also help you understand volumes if you do this exercise on sports photos. Keep the 3 degree below the character. Now that we are done correcting our mistakes, we can do the tie down. Let's rename this later as rough slash zero two. Yes, right now we lowered the opacity to around 50 or 20%. The drawing must be barely visible. We make another layer and name it tie down slash zero one with only one D. Okay, before starting, I will show you one of the best ways to check the proportions on overall drawing. This is really important. 
we go to rough and flip the image horizontally. Flip it back and forth as much as you need. This will give you a different view of your drawing and the mistakes will pop out. So now let's turn the opacity to 100%. Always check your image and flip it. There is no shortcut in Photoshop to flip the image. You have to go to edit. Now we go to transform and flip horizontally. If you want to change the shortcut, go to keyboard shortcuts. Now you go to edit. Then we scroll down until you find flip horizontally and you click on it. Then you click on the shortcut you want for it. In this case, F2. Unfortunately, it's one of the things I learned later on during my career as an artist. And I'm sad I didn't learn it before. Now I know the arm is wrong. It's too small and too far to the right. Flipping the image helps a lot with symmetry. You can imagine how much. Flip it many times in order to see the mistakes and correct them slowly. Keep flipping while correcting them. Now I think we can leave it there. We decrease the opacity again. So we use the tie down layer we made and we will use some references in the pure ref board. The first thing to do is we begin by dividing the upper torso from the lower torso. Now we draw the belt line. It has a cylinder form because of the perspective. It's just a rough clean, so do not get too much into detail. The line should not be close yet. We are just suggesting where the clean line will be. Now we will draw the arm. We choose the long sleeve black reference on the clothes group and modify it. Since she is an introvert and loves keeping things to herself, she will prefer long sleeves who hide her hands. We want the sleeves to stop at the at we also want the sleeves to stop at the end of her knuckles. You can also do a longer sleeve, but in that case, the cloth will be hanging. It can be interesting, but a little bit hard to animate if you're just a beginner. Now, you must be 100% focused on the line strokes. This means you should not be listening to music or watching videos. Now, let's draw the color of her shirt, much like the one I drew for the second character or what we choose in the pure ref board. The color is close to the neck of the character. This implies she keeps a lot to herself and does not want to show more. We go back and forth to other parts of the body because uh, this is a habit I have, but you can stay on one part, it's okay. Okay, we draw the fingers in this L shape. Make the tip of the finger a bit rounder on the joints more edgy. The thumb has a form between a bean and a sausage. Also, a tip of advice, people usually close the exterior of the hand first and interior later. What does this mean? This means the pinky finger closes first, then the ring finger, then the middle finger, then the index finger, and finally the thumb. Even when your hand is partially closed, you will have the pink finger more closed than the index finger. Keep this in mind when drawing characters and see how much it adds to the hands you draw in the future. Uh, a little problem here, if your brush is too big, make it a little bit smaller to draw the hands. L shape with tips like beans plus sausages is really easy. Try being subtle when drawing inactive hands. We go to the other arm and keep working on the sleeve. The sleeve should arrive at the end of the knuckles, but in this case, the arm is a little bit raised up and bended. This means the cloth reveals more of the hand. Check the thumb structure on the arc the fingers makes. Okay, now look at the curve this thumb structure makes, and of course the arc the finger makes. There is clearly a ball of muscle at this space. To do the hand lines, you can draw the letter M with the top facing the thumb. But not all these lines are visible. Usually the second is missing. Of course you can also do a triangle with the muscles to the opposite side of the thumb. Since she is a slim girl, her fingers should be slim as well. 
Look at the finger I just drew. Just two or three lines are more than enough. I know there are some people who may have such a chance. No hard feelings, please. But try keeping the sausage part on the bottom of the fingers, the soft part, on the more edgy part on the top, on a little bit more round at the bottom. Now, the fingers sometimes converge into a single point. In this case, the arcs of the index and pinky fingers are opposed. The only arc who does not follow this path is the thumb, of course. Well, now let's put the belt a little bit higher up for the style and to separate the pelvis from the thoracic cage. Yeah, now she's starting to look good. There are lines who are easier to draw, like her neck here. We can start drawing the wrinkles where the legs connect to the pelvis, because there is a lot of movement here. We also draw the fly on the pockets using just a few lines. The pockets have an inverted L shape. We can also add another little pocket within the first pocket to fill it with coins. Yeah, more coins. We keep drawing her hip line. Remember, curves. Now, since she has a short, the short holes are bigger than the leg to allow her to move her legs with ease. You can draw cylinders for both holes to put them in perspective. And uh, you can add a piece of fabric to give a bit of depth to that short. Of course, we uh, add the buttons to the fly. We draw the legs and we have in mind that the legs are not straight but have a lot of curves. And we draw the knee. The knee is really important since it can give a ton of information about the placement of the knee on the angle of the upper and lower leg. If we put the accent in the upper line of the knee, it seems the upper part of the leg has bended a little bit. Only one line can change a lot of things. When you are starting to draw, try to memorize the anatomy. To get better, you have to understand the subject you are studying, not simply copying it. Study anatomy studies. So, anyway, we are going to draw the facts. The line should go accordingly to the perspective. I would like her to show more skin to contrast with the tight. I think it's better that way. Now then, I decided to do shorts so we can see her legs while animating and separate part of her legs from the pelvis. However, it will be way more reasonable to make her a pair of pants because she will go hiking. Maybe we can imagine it's summer and it can get hot real fast when walking. So, now we finish her legs and add her knees. The idea is to already have some reference for hiking boots of a sort. You can look for hiking boots on a known sports website. Also, don't forget adding the chicken drumstick volume in her lower leg. Well, let's do the boots then. We will start looking at our pre-ref board. Hiking boots are big and protect the ankle. They are cylindrical on the heel part, so make sure they are bigger than the heel. It should look like they have some depth. Remember, it's just a rough clean, so if the boots are not perfect, don't panic. We divide the upper part from the boot sole. We can also draw a semicircle of a different type of material. It is often plastic. Since the feet is in pronation, this plastic part will point towards the center of the character. The shoe is in L shape. Wow, lots of L shapes today. Okay, now we draw two other L shapes to draw the piece of cloth in which the boot lace will be attached. Then, of course, we add the boot lace. Nowadays, hiking boots have four plastic or metal little things to hold the upper part of the boot lace and attach it strongly to the heel or ankle if you want. The shoe tongue is smaller than the fabric who protects the heel because we bend the leg in that direction. And to detach the boot lace to remove the hiking boot, this means the tongue is a bit smaller than the first cylinder we drew. Well now as you can see all the clothes and body accessories shapes have a purpose. 
when we twist our ankle it's weird to twist it that way it's the same for the other hiking boot but inverted a cylinder within a cylinder or a chicken drumstick within a cylinder for the chicken feet <laughs> can you imagine hiking chickens it would be great to animate that one day maybe there are two places where the feet on heel bend the most at the start of the toes and at the beginning of the feet go and check boots around you and you will see they tend to have a, the same wrinkle pattern because they get worn out to suggest these wrinkles depending on the boots fabric we can draw two lines or three if you want if the fabric is harder then there will be less or no wrinkles an old boot will have some though or at least the color will be less bright in those areas. The boot goes along with in the direction and pronation of the leg. We can e even go further and imagine the boot sole has more volume from one side rather than the other because our character has her feet often in pronation or supination. Of course, this is a bad posture and weren't the shoes on the inner side in pronation or the outer side in supination. If you have to go hiking at least once in your life, you know the importance of having good hiking boots, but mostly having a fluffy pair of socks to soften the march. It's important her socks are bigger than her boots because this avoids scratches from the boot end. Okay, now let's add some vertical lines to add some texture to these socks. Well, we go over the right legs pronation again and make the rotation a bit more pronounced to exaggerate her posture. We can go over any part of the body who does not look coherent or disproportionate. Remember that the wrist is placed where the start of the leg begins or where the hips ends if you want. It's the same. I figure it was too high so I corrected my mistake. Now we just flip it with F2 to check again the proportions. We go back and forth many times to check every part of the body and correct the arm here because it's way too big. Her boob is too high too. If you want to draw girls, don't go around just drawing boobs on a thin waist. Use more rounded lines. This will help you widen the available characters from your roster. There is something I miss with the legs too. I found them not too straight. I drew again the curve of her boot because it wasn't good to the eye while flipping. Sometimes it's just intuition and your eye becomes trained over time. Now I choose to put her hand a little bit back. It's not too introvert since the hands should protect her body and she should take the less placid good, but guess what? She will have a strong character beneath the introvert surface. Let's put the image in the right place and start with the face. Finally! We are almost done for today. I left this part for at last. The most important part of the face is the eyes. I don't remember where, but I think there is a proverb who says the eyes are the window of the soul. And I agree 100%. This is why many people begin drawing the eyes. However, we will start in a different way again. <laughs> First, we'll draw the eyebrows. Then we will draw the nose, then her mouth, and at last, the beautiful eyes. We we'll leave them at the bottom of our list because we will certainly spend more time drawing the eyes. Because I know you will love it. So, let's start drawing the ears. I did not include them in the list, but here they are. Just two C's. Since her fringe will hide the eyebrows, they will be barely visible. But we will draw them. Two lines will do. No more. Well, more like two curved lines. You should remember that the median horizontal line goes between the eyes through the lacrimal gland. When you rotate your head up or down, this line goes up or down, of course. Imagine an ellipse. But the ears, since they are near the base of the head, they do not move a lot. You can always tell how high or low is the line by looking at the ears on the eyebrows. We draw the head with her hair. The hair has volume, so it will take a bit of space. She has a small nose, 
top two little dots will work. Wait, what are you doing? Do not zoom a lot yet. It's not worth it, since the person who will view your artwork will look at the whole picture. You can also do a big nose if you want, but give it depth drawing the bridge on, of the nose. We draw the mouth as a curvy line, not more. The details will be mostly on her hair. Go further and let's add some little nose bridge with a line. We could also add more lines depending on the effect you want. You can also add freckles. And at last, finally, let's do the eyes, who are top priority in our list. And at last, let's do the eyes, who are top priority in our list. First, we draw a line for the hairline. Yes, <laughs> I know it does nothing to do with the eyes, but it just came this way. I'm kidding. This is the moment where we go to, to our pure ref board and look at the face group we have. We can be inspired by the shapes of the eyes of one model or another. Is mostly what I did for these other models here. If you look closely, you can tell there is an element who repeats itself. The upper lid is almost always straight. The lower lid is smaller and divided in two lines. It's okay if the eyes are not symmetrical at first, we will correct them later on. To give this character a gloomy look, hide partially the upper part of the iris with the eyelid. We keep drawing the hairline. Do a nail on an eye for the hairline near the ears. We choose the lasso tool and drag her right eye more to the center of the head. We draw and erase little lines here and there. For this step, it's okay if we don't close her eyes completely. We can go over her head and be more precise if we want, but it will take much longer. Then we draw her hair. She has long straight hair who finishes at her waist or even lower. When we look at the miniature besides the gloomy world, we see what kind of hair she has. With the fringe, it's almost like a rectangle. Part of her hair will cover her cheek and even the corner of her eyes. Of course, this means the ears will be hidden. When drawing the fringe, remember it has the same length. This fringe will cover her eyebrows and stop at her upper eyelid much like this other one. Or this one. It is composed by various rectangles. We keep correcting brush strokes around her head and mostly her left eye, who does not look that good. If you found problems with symmetry, flipping is always the solution. Always. Check the image from a closer angle on the zoom out to check it far away. In time, it will improve your artistic eye. Now we add some brands of hair at the back. I tear her ears apart because I don't like them. She is now gloomy girl the earless. Whew, we are done for now. I think we can start cleaning. Well, today we learn how to use pure ref references and do a rough clean. In the next class, we learn how to clean and apply lights and shadows in a cool way. Have a great experience and see you next time.